Good afternoon, or I don't, good morning, or good evening, or uh, whatever it is you got going on. Wherever you're at, that's where it is. Afternoon here, bright as hell. You see it? Woo! Bright out here. <laughs> I'm out here today suffering through this bright sunshine just to kind of give you a little bit of an update on some new equipment that we have. We have purchased ourselves uh, a set power RV45D, which is a dual zone refrigerator. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen this online. It's all over the place. Everybody's making reviews. I don't really have to give you all the exact details, but it is a dual zone so it can operate as a fridge and a freezer, or you can do a fridge and a fridge with, I don't know why you would do that, or you can do all freezer or you can do all fridge, uh, however you like it. It's got like a little, a thin little divider that drops in there. It's super lightweight. It's very easy to use. And it's got like a little magnet in the side. So when you drop that in there, uh, the refrigerator itself actually senses, oh, the divider's in there, and now it goes into dual mode instead of single. Right now, I've got it in single mode. I don't, we, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it with a freezer. Also, we purchased, and, and by the way, we, we've spent all of our own money on all of these things that I'm showing you today. None of these were sponsored, sent to us for free. So a few months ago, we purchased this portable power station or solar power generator, giant battery pack. Lots of different people like to use different terms for them, uh, but it is a River EcoFlow Pro. So this is the close enough not matter 720 kilowatt hour battery in it. Uh, I don't remember exactly. It might be 718 or 716, whatever. Close enough to 720, uh, that's all you really need to know. Uh, again, Everybody in the whole world is getting these things and, and whatever, giving you all the exact specs on it. And well, it does this much and that much. I guess today I'm just going to kind of give you my opinion. And this is how we've used it and how it, they've kind of worked out for us. I didn't want to do a review on the battery pack until I had an actual fridge. Well, now, now that we have an actual refrigerator that monitors its own temperature and it's got a compressor that cycles on and off, now we can do this like you're supposed to do this, like all of these things were kind of made to do. And I'm so happy. It works so good. Uh, on the first night, uh, I'll probably actually put in a little bit of video for you here that we took the first night that we went out. It was a night with the murder hornets and it was all crazy. After the first night of actually camping with the new fridge, uh, we still got it set to 34 degrees. Um, you can see it's, it's kind of full with there's some cookies and whatever in there. So far it's working great. And on the EcoFlow, we're still at 89%. Uh, it was plugged in for probably the last, I would say nine hours without the EcoFlow having any recharge. So after nine hours at 34 degrees, we lost 11%. I gotta tell you, super happy with that. That's gonna work. Perfect, woo, happy. So with the refrigerator, we are averaging about 10 watts per hour as it runs. Now, I'm sure that that will go up or go down depending on what you're doing. If you're running it as a freezer, I have it set at 33 degrees. So it's just cooling the entire inside compartment and where we were camping when we were up in Cincinnati. I'm sure you watched that video. It was super exciting and the fireworks and the barbecue. It was good times and murder hornets. So where we were camping up there, it was, you know, uh, mid 60s, we'll call it. I'm sure that if we were in Arizona, Moab, like the breaches of hell itself in the middle of summer and it's, you know, it only gets down to 90 degrees at night, it's going to, it's going to run more, right? And maybe you get up to 15 or 20 watts per hour average when it's actually running, which it's actually running right now. It pulls down. It's, it's kind of fluctuating between about 58 and 73. So let's call it 65 watts. Uh, a little bit more than my powered cooler was, but it'll shut off here in a little bit. It's like, oh, okay, we're cold enough and I'll turn off. When I started looking at other options and, <sighs> so I went upstairs and I checked with the boss, right? I went and talked to Marla and I said, uh, do you think we need a dual zone? Do you think we need one with a fridge and a freezer or do we just need the fridge? And my thought on this was, I don't think we really need the freezer. Uh, so I was just going to go with one of the solid fridge, but thought, ah, we're, we're spending all this money and okay, we're in, I think, I think we paid 450 or 475, something like that for this one. And the one I was looking at was 550. And so it's not like we're buying a new car or something, but that's a lot of money, 500 bucks. Like that's a lot of money to us. That's something that requires 
checking with each other. You, like, uh, you okay with this? Well, I'm okay with that. You all right with that? So I went upstairs. I talked to Marla about it and said, hey, you know, what do you think? And she said, well, no, nah, I don't think we need the freezer. However, if we're spending the money right now, why don't we just go ahead and get the dual zone one, this one here, that actually most of the time can just operate as just a standard fridge. And then if we need to use it as a freezer or if we need to have, you know, the bifurcated section so that there's a fridge and a freezer, we'll have that option. I'm honest can't really think of any conditions under which or any times at which I would need a freezer while I'm camping, right? I mean, ice cream is great. Look at me. You know I like ice cream, right? You can see me sweating right now thinking about ice cream. I'm like, whoo, want some ice cream. Uh, the only other way I could possibly think that you might want to have a freezer is, let's say you're going out for a whole week and, and like you're going to be like out there. You're not going to be near any stores or anything like that. I suppose you can take half of your meat and throw it in the frozen section, go out for the first couple of days with the meat frozen, and then pull the divider out so it can kind of thaw out on its own. Keeps things a little fresher, I suppose. What I don't like, uh, that would be the way the top seals. Like it's not, it closes down super, super easy. You don't have to like, uh, like squash it down so that you're really compressing a seal. Uh, if you can see, there's a, there's like a, foam rubber gasket that's actually built up into the lid and then i'm sure you can't see from there but on the perimeter of the opening it's got a very small lip on it that that rubber piece comes down and it kind of snitches against that uh that little lip and it seems to work everything stays cold in there it's great it's been working fine it would just be nice if i think there was like a little bit more pressure on that seal i think it might work a little bit better but the big thing that bothers me, and I actually sent an email to Set Power saying, hey, I've got this problem. I'm sure I've heard it from other people. Do you guys have a solution for this? I'm willing to pay money. I'm willing to buy something, whatever. Never heard back from them. That was annoying. But uh, the only power source for this thing is right here. Uh, you get a 12 volt cigarette plug style outlet. And it actually has, mentioned in the comments, I don't have a clue what this thing is. It doesn't say anything about it in the owner's manual, but there's like this little toothpick guy that like kind of snaps into the side there and then you can pick it out here it almost has like well, you can see there it's got like a little hook on the end i i don't know what that's for i have no idea what we're doing with that thing because it doesn't like you put it in here it doesn't reach and so you can't hook anything with it maybe it's there so if it gets stuck you can it's got leverage to pull it out i don't know, I don't know what that this thing for however this is this is it this is all you get for plug options there is a like a house plug so that you can plug it into the wall whatever but all that is is just your house power source it's got the cord goes into a little box and then has a cigarette style receptacle like this sticking out the other end so if you want to plug this thing in your house right here and this is this is nuts like these things this will as you drive down the trail you bumpity 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 or even driving down the road about two sometimes three times a day this would back out just far enough that it would turn the fridge off and so every time i stopped every time i'd get out and have to look oh the fridge is off again and i'd have to you know kind of nudge that back in there and it up and run just fine so i really wish there was a different option I'd, i'll pay for a different cable that has a different plug on it uh, that might work and so that leads me to what is probably uh, my biggest or maybe my only complaint about the EcoFlow is I really wish it had a different 12 volt option for output. Uh, like you can see, it's got the standard cigarette lighter and then it has these two five mil plugs, uh, which the five mil plugs work great. And I'm actually very much considering cutting this, putting it together. The problem with those five mil plugs is everywhere I look, it says that you're limited to a maximum of five amps. Well, if that thing's pulling down 60, 65, that's, you know, you do the math on 12 volts and all of a sudden you're at five, maybe five and a half amps right there at the limit of what they say they want you to use on that. So I certainly don't want to start a car fire. I don't want to set this thing on fire or whatever. And you just, you don't have any other options with this. So that just about does it for explaining where I'm at with the refrigerator. I'm very happy with it. Uh, for the $450 or maybe it was $475, whatever it was, whatever we spent on it, it was well worth it. Uh, I feel like it's going to serve us for a long time. 
uh, we'll just kind of see how it goes. But so far, it works real good. I like the spring-loaded handles. It's actually a little bit heavier than I expected it to be, but that's probably just my expectations. They're probably all that heavy because, you know, actual compressor instead of just silly little cooler. I don't think anybody makes a specific slide for this specific fridge, right? So I might look into maybe one of the ARBs or a, another manufacturer that has the slides that actually pulls out and then drops down. Uh, so that way it can kind of drop down, you can open it up, get what you want, back in. Uh, but those are, whew, I think those are, you know, 250 bucks anyway. So I might just, you know, buy Marla a $10 stool. Hmm. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the River EcoFlow Pro. Uh, again, like I say, it's, a, it's right about 720 watt hours. And so far, I've been ecstatic. I, I've loved it. It has treated us very well, done everything I wanted to do. Uh, one of the things that I, I love so much about it is it charges crazy fast. I want to say it charges at like 600 watts. You plug it into the wall, right? I haven't played with any solar. I don't have solar panels and kind of the way I go about camping and we don't do a lot of sit still camping. We, we're, you know, we do you know, the overlanding, the car camping where, where we're traveling every day. Um, so what I do is I keep the refrigerator plugged into the EcoFlow at all times, right? And then when I'm driving down the road during the day, where, wherever we're going, I'll take the EcoFlow and I will plug it into the 12 volt outlet that's here in the back of the truck. Uh, so that way, it, the truck is constantly charging the EcoFlow while we're driving down the road. And then when we come to a stop and I wanna protect the battery power of the truck, I'll unplug that and now the battery in the EcoFlow runs the refrigerator. And again, at, at what that's pulling down, we could probably run that for three days without charging it. It has uh, on the AC side of it, so if you wanna you know, plug in, I don't know if it'll run a toaster, but if you wanna plug in any kind of household appliances or a hair dryer or a blender or a whatever it is, and you're using the AC, I wanna say it'll run at like 600 watts with a 1200 watt you know, initial startup load. And that runs most things. Like this is actually what I was using in the video where I cut the roof rack apart and I had my death wheel plug right in, start right up, no problems. It was perfect, it was really nice to have. So this will actually run quite a lot of things. Uh, and then you also have the option for, I think it's like another 300 bucks or something like that. You can buy an additional like a jumper pack for it that plugs into the side that has the same battery. So another 720 watt hour battery but it doesn't have the inverter and it doesn't have all the electronics and whatever, so they're just charging you for the battery. Plugs in and the electronics off this, so now you've got an almost 1500 watt station that you can run all this stuff on if you end up needing it. So far, I don't think we're gonna end up needing that. I think this is gonna do us quite well. Uh, it's got this light on it, which, it blinky and it does the thing. And I, you know what I use this light for, which actually takes me to another thing I really like about it is this station has a phone app so I can open up on my phone and I can look at you know how much battery time is left or what's it doing or I can turn different things off because you can you know I can turn them all and off from the phone I can also turn that light on from my phone so I sit in the living room and I turn that light on and off and the dogs are going crazy and once in a while Marla comes down and what's that light I'm hearing there's a beeping going <laughs> and I'm just an asshole I'm just pushing the button but I like the ability to be able to sit up in the tent, I can use my phone, and boop, and I can turn off the lights, happiness. And it's all kind of great in theory. However, if I'm honest, <laughs> we've been camping with it now, I don't know, four or five times, and I don't think I've used it yet a single time. I've got no complaints. I'm super happy with it. Um, yay, EcoFlow. So just two more things real quick uh, that we have picked up that we've been pretty happy with. The first one is this here little single burner actual propane deal it's got uh it's got, what, it's got these little feets on it that come out right so that doesn't tip over and then you just take the propane cylinder screw that on drop that in there Ta -da! instant stove uh, we got this because there's a lot of times where in the morning well, okay a lot of times in the morning every time in the morning Marla wants her coffee, right? And so we've got this French press Stanley thing we've seen in other videos. And we don't necessarily want to set up the whole stove. Dig it out, put it, it takes a little more room. So this 
is real nice. It's real small. You can just put the thing on there. And this is good for 10,000 BTUs, which is the same amount as one of the burners on our Coleman stove. So this is going to heat up just as fast. Uh, it's simple. It's light, real nice. I don't know, we're into it for 20 bucks or something like that. It was super cheap. Real happy with this. Only problem we've really had with this, and we've only used it a few times at this point, we're using this Stanley uh, French press deal where it's got like a stainless steel cup. That stainless steel cup, let's say that this opening is like, you know, two and a half inches. It's like 2.6 inches. It just barely fits. And so you gotta be careful. It's gonna tip over and spill all over the damn place. So what I've done, and I haven't tried it yet, uh, but I went in and I bought just a little cover for a computer fan and we got these, I got two of them for like four bucks or something like that. And that drops right on there. Lots of room. It's plenty strong enough to hold that little coffee cup. So I think we'll, stop the cup from falling over. It stops things from falling on the ground. It just makes it a little bit easier to use. Our only question is, uh, what's the coating on this? It's got like a zinc coating on it. And is this gonna burn off and start, you know, emitting gases that are gonna kill everybody within hundred miles? I don't think so. Uh, you'll find out. If we all die, no more videos. If we don't die, I'll show you the next time we go out camping, we'll use this. The other thing we, that we bought, uh, and I'm super happy with this thing. This is a, crush light from goal zero uh, and this is a little lantern that you just broke and it pops up right and it has this kind of frosted opaque coating to it so when you turn it on it glows very well it spreads light all over the place uh, it's got three different brightness settings and then it has another setting that like makes it look like it's a candle so it, like it flickers and it's on and i don't know it's, it's kind of silly but this has two different ways to charge it. It has a solar panel right there on the top. So you can just flatten that up. You can chuck it up onto your dash. I want to say it's supposed to last like 14 hours on high and up to like 40 hours on low. If I'm remembering the numbers right, it might be a little bit off, uh, off of the battery of the charges. If you're not in a position where you have solar, let's say it's gone dead, you can also pop this little port out. There's a USB plug and you can charge it or power it by USB. Uh, so this works real good. You can just take this, hang it up in the, in the tent, or you can hang it on a tree. You can also, which <laughs> I didn't discover until I was looking at it to, to actually make this video, didn't realize that the side boop, just pulls right out, right? This handle just pops right out. It doesn't, you don't have to unlatch it. There's no, <laughs> there's no secret handshake to do it. You just, it, boop, it pops right out. So you could just run this through the loop, put that back on, and now you can hang it anywhere. So we bought this for full pop retail at, you know, a big box camping store. Uh, and I want to say we paid $21, maybe it was $20, whatever it was, totally worth it. I expected just to be 30 or 40 bucks. I know there are other brands out there that are solar rechargeable like this, and some of them you blow up like a little balloon. There's a number of different like this, but this is the only one I've seen that has this kind of poppy, you know, in and out rubber design. And I'm super happy with this. This did very well. We've only used it on one trip. We just chucked it up on the dash. Never had a problem with it, providing enough light. So that's about enough for that. This is the extent of kind of all of the, the new things that we have that we've been testing out and that, that we've really liked. Uh, there's a few things that I don't even bother telling you about because we tried them out once and it was a horrible failure. If you liked the video, click that like button. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really helps us out. Don't forget to hit that bell and make sure that you get all of notifications when we post any new videos. Uh, we actually have kind of a busier fall. I know we haven't been getting you guys a lot of good off-roading action and trust me, my heart hurts just as much as yours. I want to get out in the dirt and go drive over big rocks. Uh, and we've already got new trips that we're planning uh, throughout the winter and into next year. So thank you again for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Um, Oh, yeah, no kissing bugs. No kissing bugs. We have, we have kissing bugs here. I hate them. No kissing bugs. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm all sweaty out here. It's hot. Whew. <coughs> uh, other than that, I, I just, I don't know what you would do with who we got behind us. I think that's the, the bug guy sneaking up on us. The fuck bugs. Dead fuck bugs. Haha. <laughs> you know, just taking measurements, I don't think anybody actually makes 
a specific flaw. <laughs> More fuck bugs. Dead fuck bugs. I don't like fuck bugs. Stupid. Oh. I'm so beautiful.